हेलो एंड वेलकम टू कॉम्प्यूटोलॉजी एकेडमी एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट द डिस्कशन फॉर सथाल परगना टेनेंसी एक्ट शॉर्ट फॉर्म में इसको कहते हैं एसपीटी एक्ट राइट एंड इट इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पोर्सन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक फॉर द झारखंड पब्लिक सर्विस कमीशन एग्जाम फ्रॉम हियर यू विल गेट ओनली फाइव क्वेश्चन from this portion only you will get five questions and this is going to be a complete series of santhal pargana tenancy act where we will discuss the complete act chapter by chapter section by section sub section by section word by word so there will be no confusion in your mind related to this act at all if you go through the videos thoroughly and you go on to read the bear act or even the notes related to this act anywhere right so here this is going to be the discussion for chapter 1 and chapter 2 of the santhal pargana tenancy act and this is a very important topic so keep the video with you keep the mind stationary at the videos and watch the video till the end so that you will get every tidbit of this act right now here first of all the introduction to the act any act any law any of the bill that is passed by the parliament or the legislative assembly wherever it is is having an introduction also and here in the introduction there it is the santhal pargana district so first of all right from the introduction of the act we are not going to discuss it but we will go on to discuss this act from the passage of the act how does it came into existence what was the circumstances what was the historical underpinning due to which this act came into existence so here santhal pargana district was established in 1856 and from the movements of jharkhand we already know that after santhal hul santhal pargana was made a separate non regulation district and if you have not watched those videos then you can go on to watch the video the complete playlist is in the channel itself you will find the revolts of jharkhand in that there are four videos from where you will get everything right so here the parts of bhagalpur and birbhum districts were incorporated in the new separate district that was santhal pargana district so some part of bhagalpur that was in bihar and some part of birbhum district that was from bengal so at that very time no separate state of bihar was there or no separate state of bengal was there those two states came into existence in 1912 before that the whole territory was a single bengal presidency right so here from these two districts some of the portion which were mainly inhabited by the tribal population was carved out as a separate district non regulation district of santhal pargana and earlier this region was known as jungle tari tract jungle tari tract means those regions which were densely forested and in this region the people were living in the forests and those were the tribal population right and mainly the tribal population was living here and damine ko is the name that was also given to this jungle tari tract damine ko was basically a terminology which was being used by the british administration to recognize those areas those regions which were under the direct control of the british administration or which had been declared as the government property right and here ancient name of this region was narikhand so these terminologies you should keep in mind because these terminologies does not strictly relate to santhal pargana tenancy act but these terminologies can be asked even from the point of view of history of jharkhand so some of the questions go on to overlap in many sections so you cannot say that this terminology was there in the santhal pargana tenancy act chapter and how does uh, the number of questions has increased from five question to seven question so these terminologies can be a part of history question also so never anyone was able to govern this region mughals had tried to govern this region the pathans the afghans many of the people even the marathas were unable to control this region when they had invaded this region 
सो दिस वॉज अ रीजन विच हैड नॉट लॉस्ट इट्स इंडिपेंडेंस बिफोर द अराइवल ऑफ द ब्रिटिश एंड द इंडिपेंडेंस द सेंस ऑफ इंडिपेंडेंस इज वेरी क्लोज टू द हार्ट ऑफ द ट्राइबल पीपल एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दैट दे वेयर स्ट्रगलिंग हार्ट दे वेयर फाइटिंग हार्ट दे वेयर रिवोल्टिंग टाइम एंड अगेन to ascertain their independence again and to drive away the britishers and for that matter what happened the britishers made it a separate district non regulation district where mainly the martial law type of condition was there so the police administration was more restrict in this region to suppress any kind of revolt or uprising in this region but along with that they were of the view that to rule this region they need to incorporate some changes in the administrative system and one of the basic thing the basic reason for the discontent among the tribals was the land related issues the land revenue related issues and because of that the tribals were revolting again and again and for that matter the british administration had to introduce several changes like the cnt act the chotana court tenure act of 1869 so such kind of laws were being incorporated or implemented time and again and in this series one of the act was the santhal pargana tenancy act although the recommendation for this act was made way before the independence but the Santhal Pargana Tenancy Act was implemented only after the independence by the then state government of Bihar right so here the pahadiya people were the indigenous people and in the uh, list uh, playlist of the movements of jharkhand we have already discussed that how the pahadiya people were made minority after their revolt by the british administration and they had introduced the santhal people in this region to make the pahadiya people minority so that the santhal people will be in favor of the british administration and they will be in position to control the region however later on the pahadiya and the santhal people of the both of them were tribals so they came together to revolt against the britishers right and the holdings or the zamindari records are listed in the revenue records under the toji number so this toji number is a special terminology is a unique feature of this region like uh, if you go on to search the record of your land in this region any of the chhota nagpur district region or jharkhand district then you will find that there is thana number there is khasra number right same as that there is a toji number in santhal pargana region right so it is a unique feature of this region and the first act for the rayats in this region was the santhal pargana settlement regulation act of 1872 right as uh, i have said earlier that uh, many of the rules and regulation many of the reforms were introduced by the british administration from time to time to when of the discontent among the tribal people but the tribal people were revolting time and again due to the extortion in fact i will call this as extortion because time and again the british administration was increasing the land revenue the land rent for the tribal people even though there was no considerable increase in the harvest in this region and even time and again the people were facing the situation of crop failure droughts etc then also they were forced to pay the increased rent and because of that time and again the revolt was going on right and in the santhal pargana region this was the first tenancy act which tenancy act was the first tenancy act santhal pargana settlement regulation act and in this act it was provided that those people whose land had been confiscated and that has not been auctioned till date to anybody else but still it is with the british administration and if the people will be in position the tribal people will be in position 
to prove beyond reasonable doubt that they are the owner of this land then they will get back their land however most of the tribal people we are not having the land records as well as most of the tribal people we are not giving the consent to the other uh, tribal people that i will stand in favor of you so because of this only 30 to 35 percent of the tribal people were able to get back their land and because of this the land related discontent stayed over there which led to the further revolts and it aided the establishment of tenancy concept in the santhal pargana region before this the tribal people who were the original inhabitor of this region they considered themselves as the owner of the land but after the enactment of santhal pargana settlement regulation act it established the concept of tenancy concept of tenancy means what kiraedar ka concept la diye that the ownership of the land lies with the british administration and you are cultivating this land after the payment of a rent jisko ki hum log aaj bhi malguzari kehte hain land revenue jisko kehte hain theek hai so this concept was established through this act and it started in the santhal pargana region right and after reading mr gajner settlement report the then government of bihar formed the santhal pargana's inquiry committee in 1937 after the civil disobedience movement the new election was conducted the fresh elections were conducted and after that the congress government was formed in bihar also so they formed this inquiry committee to win off the tribal's distress the farmer's distress and to address the land related issues of the tribals and here the santhal pargana tenancy act of 1949 this santhal pargana tenancy act was passed in 1949 so if there is a question that which of the following tenancy acts or land related laws were passed after independence then you have to mark this right 1949 santhal pargana tenancy act is a land related law land related act which was passed by the bihar government after independence although the procedure had started way before the independence in 1937 itself right and here this act is divided into eight chapters and 72 sections although such kind of factual questions are not being asked nowadays in jpsc but nobody knows what they do when and when they do take now chapter 1 first chapter section 1 title commencement and extent so the first article first section of this act relates to the name that is the title of the act thereafter commencement whenever it will be implemented that date as well as extent in which areas it will be effective right so here santhal pargana tenancy supplementary provisions act of 1949 will be the name of this law because this act was a supplement was an extension of the act that was passed in 1872 right thereafter it will take effect on the date specified by the state government in its notification so whenever it will come into force whenever it will be implemented that date will be notified by the gazette notification in its gazette by the state government so it was not provided in the act itself but it was left with the state government that whenever you want to implement or enact this act you can notify the date by your gazette notification right and it will cover the entire santhal pargana district including dumka sahibganj godda devhar palamu and jamtala right so the entire santhal pargana district right so here dumka sahibganj godda devhar palamu and other districts were included jamtala etc were included in this act and section 2 
इट इज द पावर टू वेरी द एक्सटेंट ऑफ द एक्ट एंड इन एक्ट और इफेक्ट ऑफ द विड्रॉल ऑफ द एक्ट फ्रॉम एनी एरिया सो हु विल हैव द पावर टू वेरी पावर टू चेंज और वेरी द एक्सटेंट लाइक in which areas now onwards suppose that if a condition arises that the state government wants to withdraw the santhal pargana tenancy act from any region then the extent will be varied or even if the state government wants to enact this act or make effective this act in any other district then the state government can do also that one right so these powers these powers and exchange of the extent where with the state government as well as if such activity is done then what will be the effect of withdrawal suppose that uh, in jamtala district the santhal pargana tenancy act is in effect and from a certain date it has been withdrawn then what will be the effect of that withdrawal so these things are discussed over here so the state government may by notification withdraw this act or any part thereof so the state government has to has the power to enact this act in sections also in parts also like this 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 chapter will not be effective in this district or these areas so this power any part can also be made effective in a certain region or not made effective in certain regions from any part of the santhal pargana division so where these things can be done by the state government in the santhal pargana division in total there are five divisions in the state of jharkhand right so go on to mention the name of the those divisions in the comment section below so here may likewise extend this act or any part thereof to any area from which the same has been withdrawn so so if the state government have withdrawn this act from any region then again if the state government thinks that that was a mistake or we need this act for the proper management of land related issues of the tribal people in those districts then the state government by a notification simply can reenact this act in those regions from where it has been withdrawn earlier so here the thing is that the state government can do these things by simply making a notification in the gazette right and the withdrawal of this act or any part thereof from any area shall have no retrospective effect which means that if suppose that today it's a date of uh, 18th uh, 17th august so if on 17th august 2023 the santhal pargana tenancy act ceases to be effective in a district then none of the acts none of the punishments fines or any other things that had been done before this act will be affected only it will have prospective effect that means from 17th august onwards the effect of this change will be there before this date if any of the activities or pending orders are there that has to be executed that can be executed quite easily there will be no retrospective effect which means that before this date the effect of withdrawal will not be there right and here it will not affect any penalty for future punishment imposed with respect to this act even if it had been withdrawn in any region right so before this act whatever the punishment fines etc have been passed that will remain as it is right now definition what are the definitions related to different elements of this act and different elements of the society or the land related people so here the def section 4 defines the various things and in that the first thing is that the agricultural year so here in the santhal pargana region three agricultural years are being followed to calculate the land revenue or to ascertain that this financial year or this agriculture year has started so where bengali year prevails the year commencing on the first day of 
बैसाख मंथ अकॉर्डिंग टू हिंदी कैलेंडर इज द फर्स्ट डे ऑफ द एग्रीकल्चरल ईयर फ्रॉम देयर द एग्रीकल्चरल ईयर स्टार्ट नेक्स्ट इज फर्स्टली ईयर वेयर इट प्रिवेल्स फ्रॉम ये दियर इट विल बी आसिन मंथ फ्रॉम वेयर दिस डेट दिस फर्स्ट डे ऑफ द आसिन मंथ विल बी कंसिडर्ड एज द फर्स्ट डे ऑफ द एग्रीकल्चरल ईयर एंड इन सम रीजन वेयर द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट इज द लैंड लॉर्ड द जमींदार देन ईयर कमेंसिंग ऑन द फर्स्ट डे ऑफ अप्रिल दैट इज फर्स्ट अप्रिल एक अप्रिल इज द डेट दैट विल मार्क द स्टार्ट ऑफ द न्यू एग्रीकल्चरल ईयर इन दिस रीजन राइट सो ईयर नेक्स्ट टर्मिनोलॉजी इज भुगत बंधा एंड इट इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टर्मिनोलॉजी फ्रॉम द पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू ऑफ दिस एक्ट बिकॉज दिस टर्मिनोलॉजी भुगत बंधा विल कम इन डिफरेंट सेक्शन टाइम एंड अगेन एंड यू शुड नो अबाउट दिस टर्मिनोलॉजी वेरी वेल बिकॉज मेनी ऑफ द क्वेश्चन यू विल गेट रिलेटेड टू दिस टर्मिनोलॉजी एंड इफ द कॉन्सेप्ट फॉर दिस टर्मिनोलॉजी इज नॉट क्लियर देन डेफिनेटली यू आर गोइंग टू कमिट द मिस्टेक्स इन आंसरिंग द questions so here what does bhugat bandha means in english complete uc factory mortgage and this means that suppose that you have mortgaged your land to somebody some land lender or whatever it is to get some loan to get some money so there will be some amount of interest on that money that you have to pay as well as the principal amount but here in the bhugat bandha or complete uc factory system what happens if you have taken any loan or if you have taken any that of forward money then principal plus the interest will be considered as exhausted will be considered as repaid to the money lender or zamindar from the proceeds from the earning that the person the money lender is earning during the period of mortgage through that it will be considered as exhausted right next is the khas village so those villages in which there is neither a mul rayat nor for the time being any village headman that is mukhiya so if there is no mul rayat or village headman in any village then here what happens irrespective of the fact that there was or was not previously a mul rayat or village it will be considered as a khas village khas village bahut sare naam hum log dekhte hai na no garri khas to ye khas to wo khas so these are the khas village this terminology has arisen from this act itself next is the landlord which means a person other than the village headman or mul rayat entitled to receive the rent includes a proprietor a tenure holder a ghatwal and the government so in many regions wherever the government land is there so those lands will be under the zamindari or under the property rights of the government so here the co if in the present day since we talk then the co is your zamindar co is your landlord right so that is the thing here whoever is entitled to collect the rent whoever is entitled to collect the lagan from your land he will be considered as the landlord whether he is a mul rayat whether he is a tenure holder proprietor or even the ghatwal right next is the rayat which means that person not being a landlord who is not a landlord he will be considered as the rayat right and who has acquired the right to hold and cultivate it by himself or by his paid laborers by his family members whatever it is or the hired servant so the person who is directly cultivating the land after getting the tenure will be considered as the rayat right and a village headman shall be deemed to be a rayat for his private holding or his personal land so the village landlord the person the village headman because in many of the regions the village headman was being considered as the 
landlord because he was entitled to collect the land taxes land revenues so he was con being considered as the landlord but in case of his personal holding he will be considered as the rayat right now next terminology is santhal civil rules this refers to the directions issued by the state government for the observance in the administration of civil justice in the santhal parganas by the officers appointed under the act 37 clause 2 section 1 of the santhal pargana act so here all the officials all the people who are appointed by the state government or who are active in this region to look after the administrative work they will be considered under the santhal civil rules so if this was a tribal region this was the mineko this was a jangaltari region because of that the civil rules were a bit different for this region right now the tenant includes a tenure holder a village headman even a mool rayat so all these are being considered as the tenant by the government itself for the government now chapter 2 chapter 2 so here the village headman and mool rayats so these sections are related to the village headman or the mool rayat their responsibilities their work their function their attributes so here this section is from section 5 to 11 right so first is section 5 here it says that on the application of a rayat or a landlord of any khas village we have already seen that wherever there is no mool rayat or village headman at present is a khas village so if such a village is there and if the rayats and the landlord make an application with the consent of at least two third majority of the jama bandi rayats two thirds of the jama bandi rayats should approve this application should support this application and who are the jama bandi rayats those rayats whose name are mentioned as the resident of that village in the records of rights then they are considered as the jama bandi rayats so these rayats if they ascertain in a prescribed manner to the dc then the dc shall appoint a headman for that village right so here the methodology the whole thing is related to the appointment of the headman for a khas village village headman for a khas village right now section 6 it says that the village headman of a village that is not a khas village if he dies the landlord of the village shall report the same fact within three months the landlord have to report to the government to the dc that a village headman has passed away he is dead within three months of his death right within 90 days of the occurrence of the fact to the dc so that the dc can appoint a new village headman because there will be no village without a village headman nowadays up to mukhiya ka election hota so it's not an issue section 7 it says that a village headman on the appointment shall be required to execute an undertaking that shall he will be discharging his duties and be governed by the rules made by the state government so basically it is a kind of oath and affirmation to follow the rules and regulation in letter and spirit that has been enacted the guidelines that have been provided by the state government right next is section 8 whenever a person other than and higher of a last village headman is appointed then a new village headman shall be the per duty of the landlord to provide him the record of rights of the village within three months from the date of his appointment 
and this is to ensure that the new village headman knows that what is the rent and uh, that is payable by all the jama bandi rayas of that village what is the due amount earlier and how to ascertain their land ownership so if the record of rights will not be with him then how will he will be in position to collect the land revenue and the basic thing of the government at that very time in the british era was to collect the land revenue and although this act was passed after independence but the colonial hangover was already over there and for that matter if the revenue was not the major issue then also the uh, entitlement the land ownership that should be ascertained through the record of rights and for that matter the village headman should have the record of rights next is section 9 the village headman shall have no right to transfer his office in any way so like nowadays the politicians do that if i will die my son will become the party chief he will become the cm and all those kind of things so such kind of facility was not there with the village headman if the village headman dies then the new village headman will be appointed by the dc only he cannot transfer even if he is alive he cannot transfer his office of village headman to his son the new village headman should be appointed by the dc only and the village headman cannot in any way transfer his office to his son or any of his relative section 10 it says that if any waste land like those lands which are not currently being cultivated those are barren land or waste land bushes subs are there so if such kind of land is reclaimed by a mool rayat or a co rayat or any of the vacant holding which is found in the position of a mool rayat or a co rayat shall be treated as non transferable raiti holding of the mool rayat or the co rayat as per the provision of this act which means that if there is a barren land if there is a fallow land which is not being cultivated by anybody and anybody is not claiming the ownership over that but it is not a forest land then you can go on to prepare that land and you can bring it under cultivation and in such cases you will be the owner of that land but you cannot transfer that land to anybody else you have to cultivate by yourself and only your successors will be in position your son your daughter etc will be entitled to cultivate that land otherwise if there will be no such issue then everybody will go on to clear the land bring it under cultivation and they will sell it to the higher prices payers so to ensure that no such kind of thing also go on and the person who is willing to cultivate the land should get the land right so this was the thing next is section 11 all fines imposed upon and realized from the village headman mool rayat rayat under this act shall be deposited into a fund to be known as the headman's rewards fund this shall be used on the order of deputy commissioner only although it is a village headman's rewards fund because the village headman has collected the fines have imposed the punishments and collected the extra revenue so it is under the village headman's rewards fund but this fund cannot be used without the permission of dc and necessarily in most cases the dc go on to order to use this fund for the improvement of land for the improvement of irrigation facilities and various other things which may ensure the higher level of agricultural produce so this is section 11 and here we finish off two chapters of santhal pargana tenancy act and if you have watched the video till the end then please consider subscribing the channel and press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload new videos also you can follow us on our facebook and instagram handle our app is available on the google play store from where you can also purchase the study material various free study materials are available various free tests are available 
करंट अफेयर्स मैगजीन आर अवेलेबल इन बोथ हिंदी एंड इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज एंड द डिस्क्रिप्शन फॉर द ऐप इज प्रोवाइडेड इन द लिंक फॉर द डिस्क्रिप the app is provided in the description box below and all the same resources are available on our website also and if you want to purchase the study material directly from us then you can go on to contact us on our contact numbers provided in the section below you can also whatsapp us or call us thank you very much and have a nice day